Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We're going to begin the last chapter of 1 John, chapter 5, tonight. And before we do, let's pray. Father, we're thankful for your word tonight as we delve into the depths of what John has to say to us about being an overcomer. Uh, it's a great lesson for us as we walk through this world. I pray, Father, that we uh, just receive his word tonight and apply it to our lives so that we will become overcomers in the world for you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. You know, we're getting now near the end of uh, our study in 1 John. And as we finish up 1 John over the next couple of weeks, we're going to then move straight into uh, 2 John and 3 John. So I hope you plan to stay with us. Uh, but tonight we're going to finish, uh, we're going to begin chapter 5 of 1 John. And I want you to re remember that throughout Scripture, Christians are called many, many things. But in this text... John calls us overcomers, implying that we are victors, that we are winners, that we're conquerors. You know, the term overcomers is used twice in verse 4 and once in verse 5, and it's seen some 28 times in the New Testament. And out of those 28 times, 25 of those are by John himself in his writings. So it's a common theme for John. And the word literally means to conquer, to gain the victory, or to, or to, to gain the defeat. Uh, it was a popular term that was used by the Greeks who believed that victory could not be achieved by mortals, but only by the gods. In fact, they had a god named Nike, the goddess of victory, who aided Zeus in his battle against the Titans. So now you know where the shoe company Nike got their name. Now, Jesus used the term in John 16.33 to speak of his victory over Satan, providing the basis for Paul's proclamation in Romans 8.37. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And the term in Romans 8.37 of more than conquerors is absolutely, it means absolutely, completely victorious. No wonder why Paul goes on to proclaim in Romans 8, 38 and 39 the following. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor heights nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So you see, that's why he can say that, because we're, we're conquerors in Jesus. And remember, because of Christ's work, we are victors over Satan and death and the world. Those are common things that, that the New Testament writers tell us that we are victorious over. In fact, uh, we are described as aliens or strangers in the world in which we live uh, because of that. So now let's read what uh, John wrote in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and see what he has to say to us about being overcomers. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God that we are... We keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Now notice in this short section of Scripture that our victory comes through three primary things. In verses 1 and verses 4 and 5, through faith in the truth of Christ. And then in verse 1, through our love for God and others. And in verses 2 and 3, in our obedience to the Word of God. So let's look at our faith in the truth of Christ first, found in verse 1 and verses 4 and 5. The foundation of our victory in life is our belief in Jesus is the Christ, that He is the Son of God, that He is the Messiah. That truth... It must be embraced that he is, the, he is born of God. Uh, literally, out of God has been begotten. If we don't believe that, then 
we're not Christians. We don't have uh, this ability to be an overcomer. Now, the tenses of the verbs are important in this section of scripture. Uh, scripture. Uh, in verse 1, uh, in order to understand it, you have to understand the tenses that are going on here. Uh, the word believes is in the present tense. And the term is, uh, is born is in the perfect tense, making the literal translation of verse 1. Whoever is believing that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten of God. So continual faith is the result of new birth. It is not its cause, in other words. We do not keep ourselves born again by believing and losing our salvation if we stop believing. That's not what John's saying. He's saying, what he's saying is that our perseverance in the faith is what gives evidence that we are born again. Faith, the faith God grants is permanent and cannot be lost or die. Remember the parable of the, of the soils in Matthew 13, verses 5 through 22, when Jesus talks about this issue as well. So do you get the, the importance of that, that uh, section of Scripture about understanding the tenses? That continual faith is the result of new birth. It's not its cause. That we do not keep ourselves born again by believing and lose our salvation if we stop believing. It's our perseverance in the faith that gives evidence that we are born again. That's how we know that we are born again. We keep, keep at it. We keep struggling. We keep walking forward. And recall John's words in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, when he said this, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that it might be plain that they are not of us. And remember his words in 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. Now, all of those who believe in Christ have been born of God and overcome the world. The victory comes through their faith in Christ as the Son of God, just like the great, great cloud of witnesses in Hebrews 11. That's a common... Uh, theme in scripture that those who have been born of God and overcome the world are those who believe in Christ. Now look at verse 1 and look also about this issue of love for God and for others. The second mark of an overcomer is the mark of love for God and his children. Now John has talked about this repeatedly throughout his his letter to us. I want to just go over some of the verses that he's talked to us about. 1 John chapter 2, verses 10-11. through 11. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and keeps walk and, and walks in the darkness and does not know where, where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Now look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. And then 1 John 3.14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. And then 1 John 3.17. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God love abide in him? And then 1 John 3, 23. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. And 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And 1 John 4.12, No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love is perfected in us. And then finally, 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 and 21. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, 
Whoever loves God must also love his brother. So the reality is this, that this commandment is constant throughout the New Testament. If you have my notes, you can see all the verses there that I've referenced. It's a common theme across the New Testament. But now let's go on and let's look at verses 2 and 3 and notice that an overcomer is obedient to the is a person who is obedient to the word of God. And this is the next key to being an overcomer is to love God and to observe his commandments. Genuine saving faith it produces love towards God which results in obedience to his word. Now the word observe is in the present tense and it means to continuously accomplish, to carry out, to practice. It does not imply perfection, but an overarching direction of our lives. It is, an, it is focused on external action. So the, the conduct of our lives is to follow God's word. That's a common theme throughout the New Testament. And the word keep in verse 3 has the connotation of keeping watch over or guarding or preserving, meaning those who love God will treasure God's word and guard it and continue to work in it and continue to walk in it. Um, so this word has the connotation of being focused on our internal heart attitudes. So you see it's both an external expression as well as an internal expression. The theme of obedience to scripture runs throughout both the Old and the New Testaments. And obedience is a legalistic compliance, but, it, but in the Christian faith, it comes from the heart. It's based upon a willing attitude. It is total, it is constant, and it is joyful. Those are things that should characterize our obedience to God's Word. And it's not burdensome. If you go back and you read Psalm 119, it expresses delight in God's law because it gives us wisdom on how to live. And if, if you think back over our study on the book of Revelation, you'll remember that all seven of the churches, they were given promises to, to the overcomers within their churches, with one of the greatest being in the church of Philadelphia, which said this in Rome, Revelations 3.12, The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out from it. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which come down from my God out of heaven and on my own name. And then remember what Jesus' proclamation in Revelations 3, 5 is to the overcomers. He says this, The one who overcomes will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And then remember this promise to those in the lukewarm church at Laodicea uh, in Revelations 3.21. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. So you see, being an overcomer is critical in the Christian faith. So. Here are three questions for you to think about tonight. How does the understanding of the term overcomer help you as you read Romans 8 verses 37 through 39? And why is that such an encouragement to us? And here's the second question. How does the discussion on the permanence of our faith help us by being overcomers? How does that give you the fortitude to keep going? And then number three, uh, I want you to go and read Revelations 2 and 3. How do the promises to the overcomers in each of the churches help you to stand firm in your faith? So I hope you've enjoyed our short study tonight. And I want to invite you to our church on Saturday nights at 630. We meet at Victory Life Church located at 155 Northwest 112th Avenue in Plantation, Florida. The zip is 33325. And so we hope to see you on Saturday night at 6.30. God bless.